Thank you very much. Um, like Anne mentioned, this is kind of a new topic to everybody. And often I will go to uh, give a talk and people think I'm talking about human health because propolis is being used a lot for humans uh, and it's been studied for many, many years for human health. But nobody has studied um, or we just started to uh, understand how it benefits the bee health. So it's not that I don't care about human health, but my, my work is uh, on bee health. So I, I find very fascinating how the honeybee, the social structure, how, how that works. They, are, they, they live in this clustered society with highly related individuals and it works. And they're mostly workers, females, and it works. I have two sisters, we fight a lot, and I just don't understand if it was 40, 50 thousands of us, how that would work. And it's just amazing, it blows my mind. Um, they, all they, what, what they do and how they do, the behaviors that they perform to make it work, is really fascinating, it's amazing. It blows my mind and I think everybody's mind. They're often characterized as uh, super organisms. And why is that? Well, because bees, they cannot live on their own. Uh, they, they, need, they need each other to survive. And we, we, we call it uh, the, a group of individuals living in a nest with thousands of relatives with the ability to function as one organism and take decisions at the colony level. And these decisions that they make at the colony level end, ends up influencing their individual behavior. And the, when I talk about the decisions that they take at the colony level, it's just something that the hive needs or the hive wants at that particular time. So for example, if they need to swarm, uh, they make that decision at the colony level where to go. So scout bees go out and they will look for new nest sites that they, they can swarm. And they will go back to the colony and start recruiting other workers to that new nest site that they found was the best. But all these scout bees will do the same. They will all try to recruit workers to their nest site. But they decide where to go as a colony level and they will move to the nest site that they decide to move to. So that, that, that the kind of decision that they make uh, at the colony level that influence individuals' behavior. And their uh, immune defense, their natural defense mechanisms function the same way. They have individual level uh, natural defense mechanism and they have social immunity. And sometimes the behaviors that they perform at the colony level, that's called the social immunity, influence the individual immunity. So at the individual level, they have, it's quite similar to humans, for example. They have the cellular immunity and they have humoral immunity. So at, at, at the cellular immunity, they'll have the encapsulation of pathogens uh, by blood cell molecules, just like us humans. And at the, humor, uh, the humoral level, the humans, for example, they synthesize antibodies. Honeybees, insects do not synthesize antibodies. They have a much simpler uh, humoral immunity they synthesize antimicrobial peptides. And how, the, how do they synthesize these antimicrobial peptides? It's, it's quite simple. I mean, if you think of the DNA as a cooking book of our organism that has all the recipes to synthesize the proteins that we need, and let's say, for example, the bee is under a pathogen infection and needs to synthesize an antimicrobial peptide to fight that infection, it will take the recipe just to synthesize the protein from the DNA, the DNA will send that out from the nucleus to the ribosome, which is the machinery that translate that message, translate that recipe, and synthesize the protein. So every time for every single antimicrobial peptide the, need, the bee needs to synthesize, it will send that, that message, that recipe, to the ribosome and will produce a protein. And that recipe, that message, it's called the messenger RNA. So that's how I, I measure immune system activity. I can measure how many copies of that messenger RNA for that antimicrobial peptide was present at the given moment, 
and I can tell how activated or not was their immune system. And I do that, uh, and I'll show uh, the graphs later showing the immune system activity uh, in bar, using bar graphs like that. So you can see that, uh, let me see. This population here, for example, in red, their immune system was less activated than the population in gray, because it was lower. It has less copies of that messenger RNA. And sometimes the graph will be flipped, but every time when the bar is low, it means it was less activated. So the immune system was quieter compared to the other population that was more activated. And I just uh, included the trend bars, uh, just sometimes it's easier to look at the trend bar so you can discriminate which one was higher, which one was lower. Uh, so we, we just talked about the individual immunity. They have the cellular and the humoral immunity. That's the, in the individual level. But at the colony level, they perform behaviors that benefit the colony, that protects the colony, benefit the colony from getting an infection, and ends up benefiting their individual immunity as well. And an example is the hygienic behavior. I'm sure most of you have heard of the hygienic behavior. It's when a bee detects uh, a larvae that is infected and removes the larvae before that disease becomes infectious and, and, and get the hive infected with that bacterial disease, for example. Grooming is another behavior that's uh, part of their social immunity. They can groom off uh, varroa mites from a nest mate. And another example that we'll be talking about today is the collection of plant resins. And why plant resins is part of the social immunity? Because plant resins, uh, they have antimicrobial compounds. They're actually part of the plant defense mechanism. Plants synthesize resins as part of their defense mechanism against pathogens and herbivore attack. And it, it works really well for plants. And for some insects, it works really well too. Some in, other insects, apart from bees, they collect resins and they use that for their own benefit because they have, it has antimicrobial compounds. And bees, they do that too. They take resins and they, they use that for their own benefit. They collect resins using their mandibles. They will scrape off the, 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 the plant using their mandibles and they'll move to their hind, lab, hind legs and they'll transport back to the hive on their hind legs just like they transport pollen. And in fact, it looks quite similar to pollen uh, it's just, it's, it's shinier than pollen and the, the ball is not as regular. The ball of the pollen ball is more a shape of a, a ball and the resin is more irregular shape. Um, and when they come back to the hive, uh, the resin load is so sticky, they cannot unload themselves. They usually need the help of another bee, another housemate bee. And the other bee, will use their mandibles to take the resin load from the hind legs and go immediately deposit that resin. And at that time, we call it propolis. Uh, but so resin and propolis are basically the same thing. The difference is that sometimes the bee will add wax to the resin just to make it easier uh, to work with. Resin is very sticky, so they add wax. And by adding wax, and because they use their mandibles to um, manage and to work the propolis. Sometimes there'll be some glandular secretions, uh, but we don't know whether they, they want to add or it just happens. Uh, but they, they deposit all over the colony. And here you can see it's in a tree cavity. So this was a colony that was nesting in a tree cavity. And they usually in a tree cavity, they would deposit propolis on the entire inner surface where the colony is nesting. So you can see above this red line, the colony was in nesting there. You don't see frames, you don't see combs, I'm sorry, not frames, but you can see a difference in the color. You can see there is lighter uh, brown and where the colony is nesting is this dark brown. This dark brown is the propolis, the, the propolis layer. And they deposit on the entire inner surface uh, surrounding that nest and that's what we call the propolis envelope. And uh, if they do this in, the, in a natural habitat, in a tree cavity, you may ask, what, if they don't do that in a commercial hive, is that a good, is that an important component of their social structure that they don't have in the commercial hive? And uh, in the hive, we don't see it. So we see uh, maybe when the box, uh, the two walls touch or where, where the frames sit, 
they'll put in between the frames, but they don't make that envelope that we saw. They don't make that propolis envelope surrounding the colony. So Mike Simone, he's a former PhD student of my advisor, Marlos Bivek. He has graduated already, but for his PhD, that's what he studied. He was interested uh, on that question, is it an important component of their, of, of their hive, of their social structure, of the nest architecture structure? Do, does it influence their individual immunity because it has antimicrobial compounds? And he collected propolis and he made a propolis tincture. So you can make, using alcohol, you can make a propolis tincture. And he painted the inside of colonies with that propolis tincture and left the bees in that hive for seven days. So that's how long the experiment took because the goal was only to see the effect on the immune system, not a long-term goal. So he left the bees for seven days and he noticed that bees in colonies that had the propolis paint had a quieter immune system. So their immune system was not as activated as the bees in colonies that did not have that propolis rich environment, that propolis paint. And in fact, other researchers have found similar results, good, the, the correlation of uh, propolis in, in a health hive, a healthy hive. Uh, this is a research done with Africanized bees, so they're not the same as the Italians, the European genetic lines we have here in U.S. But he found that colonies had, had a lot of propolis, also had um, a lot of brood, the, the workers, they lived longer, they had more honey, uh, they were more hygienic, and they also had more pollen. But we just have to, those are Africanized bees. Africanized bees, they collect a lot of propolis naturally. Um, but doesn't mean that we can't see the same effects on our bees if we stimulate them also to collect more propolis. And that's, that was our goal with our research, was to stimulate them uh, to collect more propolis. So to have that propolis envelope, to deposit a natural propolis envelope, instead of painting, to let them construct that propolis envelope that they do in the wild and when they nest in tree cavities. And we looked at uh, the effects of that presence of a propolis envelope in the individual level and at the colony level. We looked at the immune system activity of uh, nurse age bees. We looked at virus level at, the, at each individual and protein level at each individual. At the colony level, we look at colony survivorship, uh, pathogen parasite load, and colony strength by looking at uh, the amount of brood in the colony. And I will be showing I would not be showing just individual level and colony level results. I'll be showing them kind of mixed because they, they, can, they connect. Uh, so virus level with pathogen and parasite low, for example, they're kind of connect together. And protein level and colony strength, and I will explain how these two go together. And so how do we um, stimulate them to, collect, to, to create that propolis envelope? We use propolis traps. Um, we think the reason why they construct that propolis envelope in a tree cavity is because the rough surface. We think that rough surface triggers them to, to deposit propolis and create that. Uh, so we, we, we made the smooth surface of the, the, the commercial hives rough by adding propolis straps. And these are just commercially available propolis straps and we cut it to the, the correct uh, width and length of the box and we stapled to all four walls. Uh, I'm just showing two of them, but we stapled to all four to make that envelope into every box that the colony had. And they were usually three deep uh, boxes. So they all three deep boxes had that propolis uh, traps. And the goal was to create this, what they have in the natural habitat. And that was what we got. So it did, it did work. So the the these brown lines you see here, the, that is propolis. The propolis that they deposited in every single gap of the propolis trap. So they did construct the propolis envelope. So we had the propolis envelope colonies and we also had control colonies. The control colonies are colonies that we did not add any propolis traps. So they 
the positive propolis where they could, where they, they do it uh, normally uh, when they don't have the traps. So as you can see, there's between frames, there's propolis there. Maybe you cannot see very well, but there's propolis here and there's propolis also on the box. So when you put another one on top, they would try to, to, to deposit propolis in between. And that's what the control columns did. So they had some propolis, just not as much as the ones that had the traps. And we repeated this for two years. It was a full, we did like a full season uh, uh, experiment for two years. We, we took assessments, so all the individual and colony level assessments that I was talking about early, we took in July, uh, summer, in September, and in the following May, 2013. And we repeated again in 2013 with brand new colonies, so it was a repetition. And we did not do, uh, we took assessments in July. So it was just September and the, the following May. Of course, we do not open our colonies in the winter uh, in Minnesota. So it was just September and May. So first I'll show the results for individual immunity. And we took uh, at the humoral level again. And that's how it will be showing. So whenever the bar is low, it means it was less activated. It has less, the immune system was quieter. So this is for July. The propolis envelope group is the ones uh, with the red. And for July of the six, we were looking at six immune genes. Uh, and all of the six immune genes, two of them was less expressed in the, in the in bees that were in a propolis envelope colonies. So in July, for at least these two immune genes, it, it seemed like the immune system was quieter. So when they were in a propolis envelope environment. By September, all six were being less expressed in bees that were in the propolis envelope colonies compared to bees that were in the control colonies. This was quite interesting. This was September 2012, and I'll jump to the next year. Now we'll show you May later, but the next, the following uh, replicate year, September 2013, we saw that uh, expression only lower in two immune genes. So the same that was in July of September 2012. But of six, two again were being less expressed in bees from propolis envelope colonies. Then we have the winter, and what happens in the winter? They do not collect propolis, they don't collect anything. They just stay in the hive, and they can't collect resin. So all the resin that was in September, of course, it stays there, but they can't collect any more resin. And we find quite uh, different results in May of the, the first experimental year. We found that instead of less expressed, three of the sex immune genes were been more expressed in bees that were in propolis envelope colonies. And uh, to be honest, we, we don't have an answer for why would they be highly expressed. The following year, they were all the same. There was no difference. Um, then you ask, well, what's, what happens in the fall, so between the fall and, and May, why do we see these different results in May? We are not sure, but we, we think that it could be that the propolis loses the activity. So propolis, uh, it has antimicrobial compounds, and some of the antimicrobial compounds are volatile, so they can volatilize. And if they can't collect fresh stuff, maybe the propolis will lose its activity uh, over the time, so from September to May. And we test that. We collected propolis from colonies in October, and we collected again the following May from the same colonies, we collected the propolis again to see if there was, our hypothesis was true, if it, the propolis loses its activity, and maybe that's why our results in May are so uh, different. And it does, it loses activity. So, for example, I have a line, and that means an X amount of, of bacteria, and it, you need, more propolis collected in May to kill the same amount of bacteria than you need propolis collected in October to kill the same amount. So if you need more propolis from May to kill the same amount, it means you have less antimicrobial compounds in that uh, propolis, and that's why you need more of it to kill the same amount of bacteria. So the propolis, the propolis from October had more antimicrobial compounds 
And we concluded that yes, the propolis loses its biological activity with time. So it lost its biological activity over the winter. So they need fresh stuff coming in to get that effect on their immune system, on their uh, immunity. But they don't collect over the winter and their immune system was maybe similar for one year and different uh, the other year in May, but they will soon start to collect more. Uh, and in July, would, we would probably see the same effect of a quieter immune system when they had fresh propolis in the hive. So with that, we concluded that the propolis envelope uh, colonies, they synthesize less immune genes. So they have a quieter immune gene, a quieter immune system compared to colonies that do not have a propolis envelope. And we, we think that the propolis has a direct impact, has a direct impact effect on their individual immunity. And why, why, should, why is that good? Why is that good that their immune system is quieter? It's good because they spend less energy on immune function if their immune system is not as activated. Their physiological, there's a high physiological cost that is associated with, with the immune, with an immune response. And if you think of us, for example, when we are sick and we are synthesizing antibodies, we feel kind of weak. Uh, we feel weak because our body needs that energy to, to, to start an immune response, okay? To start an immune response to, to protect our body, to fight that infection. And it's the same with bees. When, they're, when they need to fight an infection and they need to synthesize antimicrobial compounds, that requires energy. And if they don't have to have an active, very act, highly active immune system, they can use that energy and allocate to perform all their behaviors, uh, all their necessary behaviors in the hive. They can use that energy to forage or they can use that energy to rear the more brood and have more brood in the colony. The, like I mentioned before, propolis, uh, it's been studied a lot for human health, and it's a, a tradition in, in some cultures to use uh, propolis as a natural remedy, but not for, uh, for honeybee health. And if you look at all the research being done on the study of propolis in human health, they say that the propolis has an effect on the cellular immunity of humans, and it increases the cellular immunity. I did not measure cellular immunity. On my research, I only measure humor immunity. But if we think that if, it ha if it's the same, let's say if it's the same and the propolis has the same effect on bees it has in humans, and it also increases their cellular immunity, it makes sense that it would decrease, it would, would have the result that we saw, that it decreases the humor immunity because it decreases the need to synthesize these antimicrobial peptides. If the cellular immunity is more activated, you will probably take care of it, and they will need less from the humoral immunity. So you will decrease the humoral immunity activity. That's what we think, that's our hypothesis, if it has the same effect on bees that it has in humans. So we think that, uh, so bees don't have just their individual immunity. They don't rely only on their individual immunity. They have these, these layers of defense mechanisms. They have the colony level immunity, the behaviors that they perform that protect the colony, protect themselves. And they also have what we call now this architecture, this nest architecture component that is the propolis envelope. And we think is an important component of their social structure of the nest architecture and that benefits the colony level immunity and individual immunity. We looked at pathogens and we looked at viruses. We did not notice any uh, difference uh, in, in virus level, but I have to say they were all very low. And we started this experiment with packages. We started with packages, with brand new equipment, with uh, new frames and foundation. And usually when you start your hives with packages and in brand new equipment, you have less pathogens and we ha you have less viruses. So maybe our design, our experimental design was not set 
to see a difference, or maybe there is no difference, it does not affect virus. And we, we cannot tell this right now. But we did see a slight lower uh, uh, on black queen cell virus in 2014. I, we saw a slight lower level in bees from propolis envelope colonies, but it was a slight lower and not significantly different. Uh, we did not see difference in nosema and varroa levels uh, between colonies with or without a propolis envelope. And again, it could be uh, because of our experimental design, we started with packages and brand new equipment. And we took colony level measurements. We measured survivorship and colony strength uh, by looking at brood area, so the amount of brood the colony had. For survivorship, we measure from the start to the end of the experiment, so not just winter survival. The first year, we saw that colonies that did not have a propolis envelope, so the control colonies died more than the colon compared to colonies of the propolis envelope. Uh, and they died, the colonies that did not have the propolis envelope, they died more in the summer, as you can see right here. They died more in the summer, and we don't know exactly why. Uh, their pathogen load was, like I just showed, was similar uh, in virus as well. They just, the, they died more in the summer compared to the colonies that had the propolis envelope, and we had a more success at the end, uh, more colonies at the end of the experiment when they had that propolis envelope, but it was similar on the second year. One thing that was very interesting, uh, the colonies that had a propolis envelope had more brood uh, compared to the colonies that did not have in May. So the following, uh, the following year, they had more brood. That was very interesting because, and it's uh, good, I think, because in May it's when the colony really needs a strong, uh, strong hive. If they start strong, they will finish strong and they'll probably have a better chance to survive the winter. So it was very nice to see that in May they had more brood compared to the other colonies. This was significant on the first year, not statistically significant on the second year, but we did see the same trend. And they had more protein. So bees in colonies uh, that had the propolis envelope, they had more protein in May compared to colonies that did not have the propolis envelope. We measure protein uh, by measuring the amount of vitalogenin, and that's uh, an, uh, one of the most, um, the vitalogenin, it's most of the protein that a honeybee has, you can measure using the vitalogenin. And, um, they say uh, it, it's, it's thought to be a marker of colony health and nutrition status. And it's also thought that if the, colony, if the bees have more protein, they rear more brood. And that uh, worked really well, correlated really well with our results. They had more brood and the bees had more protein. So just to summarize uh, our results, we think, uh, so the incorporation of resin from the environment into the nest architecture in the form of a propolis envelope can benefit honeybees at the colony and individual level. The presence of the propolis envelope directly affect honeybee health. Uh, bees from propolis envelope colonies had a quieter immune system in the summer and fall. The presence of the propolis envelope increased uh, colony survivorship in one year, although it did not increase in the second year, but it improved uh, colony strength. They had more brood in May of one year, and we did see the same trend on the next year. But it did not affect level of natural occurring pathogens. We managed these colonies just like maybe you would manage yours. We we treated, we treated for varroa. We did not treat for nosema because we did not, uh, we have a baseline a level that we treat after they reached that level and they never did, so we did not treat for nosema. But we treated for varroa in the fall. We feed them, we feed them with uh, protein and we fed them with sugar syrup as well. We had uh, honey super, so we just, we managed them just like uh, a commercial 
beekeeper maybe would manage. Uh, and we, we did not see any difference in these natural uh, pathogens, but it was interesting to see the effect on the immune system, colony strength, and survivorship of at least one year. And with that, I'd like to thank you. And do we have time? We have time for questions, if you have questions. Um, yeah, so he, he said, so plants have, uh, different plants will synthesize different resins. Uh, there will, it will be a difference in the antimicrobial compounds, and it could be a difference on the amount of antimicrobial compounds that each plant, of the resin that each plant synthesizes, and that depends on the species. And he asked if there is a difference on what plant they forge on. Am, am I, am, is that correct? Is that a difference what resin they choose? Um, it is that's a very interesting question, and it's one experiment that uh, we did, and I'll, I'll be presenting some of the results tomorrow. We did look if there was, um, we looked if bees, when they're challenged, if they select for different resin, if they can, if they will choose the type of resin that they want, and if they do, we looked whether that resin that they, it seems like they choose is more active than the others. Um, we don't know the exactly answer yet, but it seems like they can select um, whether they would do that in a, that will also depend on what type of plants they have around. Sometimes they don't have much of a choice uh, in, we, we, that's very new, but it, Possibly, maybe they, they can select, so maybe it matters. But all probe was, um, even the ones that were less active, the ones that we collected, all the resins in this other project that we collected, even the ones that was less active, they were still very good. Um, there was a significant difference between resins from different plants, but they were still very active. Uh, they had a good biological activity. So if they're just collecting for general uh, health, uh, not for specific pathogens, it may not matter, uh, but I, I don't know. Yes? Did, did you take a look at how much uh, rosin or propolis was being brought into the hives and comparing those that uh, you made that propolis envelope with compared to the control? Was there a difference between what was collected? So he asked if, there, uh, if I measured the amount of, resin, of propolis in the propolis envelope treatment compared to the other, the other ones. I did not measure the amount. Um, we thought about it, about maybe weighing the colonies at the end and scraping and, and scraping the other ones and weighing to make a, a, a quantitative uh, uh, comparison. We did not do that uh, because, like I said, they add wax to the propolis, and we we thought we could we would not be making a true comparison because maybe some colonies are adding more wax or not, so we would be maybe under or overestimating the amount. Also, some resins are more active than the others, so we would be uh, hiding that property as well by comparing. So we did not do that. We did not compare, but they were uh, visually more um, compared to the other colonies. Yes? Usually, uh, I'm not, I don't really, really know, but usually for human consumption, they uh, make tincture all right away. So if you make the tincture and it's in, a, in alcohol, an alcohol and you keep it in a, in a vial that it's dark, so away from, don't get the sunlight. Usually you keep their properties f for a long, long time because it's in the alcohol already. But so for human, comp con for human consumption is usually that way. They don't use the, the raw propolis. But if you're finding raw propolis, you, you, I don't know exactly how long it would keep, uh, at least what we found from October to May is that it lost a lot of its activity. Um, so 
I would say maybe five, six months if it's raw propolis kept uh, just in a room. Uh, could be, but I'm not, I'm not an expert on that area. Yes. So he asked if there is a, a temperature effect on the, the volatilize when the, the compounds were volatilized. Um, it could be uh, because high temperatures will just uh, increase uh, compound the, the, the compounds to volatilize. We never measure that um, if it increases or not. So I cannot answer exactly um, what what's how 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 hot it needs to be or how cold. Uh, but when we Test, for example, for volatiles in the lab, and we usually do it in a freezer, uh, it's really, really low. Uh, we do it in a, like a minus 20 freezer, a mi minus 20 Celsius, and volatilizing the, the compounds volatilize really, really, really slow, and sometimes we have to leave it for seven days to get some results. Um, so I, I know at least that if you do it in a minus 20 Celsius temperature, it's really slow. But I don't know in the summer, for example, how, how much the heat would influence. But usually in the colony inside, they'll keep the temperature, they regulate the temperature to keep uh, stable. So inside of the colony, usually there's not too much up and down. Um, in the winter, you would. So. Yes? Uh, I'm interesting on that. I'm interested on that. Um, I'm finishing my PhD in, uh, in a few months, so probably not this year. It will depend on my next uh, job if I have the uh, ability to do, if they will let me do that on a side or if they will be interested to, to study that. I'm interested on the long term uh, effect and, and even more interested or as interested to study that in old equipment. Uh, study that with not brand new equipment, but old, old frames, so five years old, maybe 10, six, whatever, some, something really old and, and study the effects on old equipment. See how that works. Well, thank you very much.